with prayer followed by Miss Alea Hess. today Lord yeah for those days I think a lot he been helping me through all day Lord and I think a lot he helped me at school and I think Lord he helped me a lot at the Avengers Lord and I think a lot he's been taking care of my family and me and I think a lot we did it at the um God's house and I thank a lot days I think a lot for him I think a lot for him to help me and I think a lot he keep me safe when I'm dangerous I think a lot he keep me safe I think he keep me safe I think a he keep me safe around different places I think a lot he helped my mind I think a lot he helped my mind I think a lot what he did for I think a lot what he did for my 
think a lot of what he did for my family, I think a lot of he did with my, I think a lot of he did with my mama. I think a lot of what he did for everything. I think a lot of what he done. Please may you pray, amen. I thank Lord for my family. Psalm 100, make a joy noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. I thank the Lord for bringing everybody here as more so this long be. I thank the Lord for taking care of my family, and I thank the Lord for waking me up and for me coming here. I thank the Lord uh, for waking us up, and I thank the Lord for making us wake up and be a, a good girl. I think a lot he been helping me sleep for the weekend, and I think a lot he bring us on here back here. I thank a lot for my family. My show is not open.
God is a good God. I know God is a good God. Oh.
First Lady, to Minister Green, Sister Green, to my husband, and to all the saints of God, truly, God is a good God. I thank him, praise him for watching over me and protecting me as I travel up and down the dangerous highways. I was at school the other day. The enemy said, I got you healed up. I said, no, you don't either. I said, God, you somebody, y'all. God is a good God. I told God I need you to fight a battle for me because I can't fight. I've been going over this thing and I went in my little closet again and I told God, I said, God, this is this my witness once again. And I had a situation and they wouldn't let my grandbaby ride the bus and he had to go three blocks over. I said, God, this don't make no sense here. I said, well, I'm going to spread this thing before you. And God, you work this thing out for your glory and for your honor and for your praise. So I got up on that Thursday morning. And God spoke to my heart and said, call the supervisor over the entire bus system. So I called and the lady said, well, why do you want to talk to him? She said, uh, could you talk to Miss Harris? I said, just anybody. I need to get a matter taken care of. And I told her what the situation was. She said, ma'am, that don't make no sense. They want your baby to come three blocks over to catch the bus and then ride back to his house. I said, that's what they told me. And she asked me where was the location at. And I told her, she said, no, ma'am, there's no route for that. This is the route. And she said, she asked me who it was, and I told her what the situation was. And so she said, let me make a phone call. So she made some phone calls, and he's my witness. She called back. She said, this is his route. His permanent route. Just what I asked God to do. Glory! That's why I praise him the way I praise him. It ain't about me. God is showing himself. Even in the little bitty things, we owe him a praise. If we would just learn to praise him with the little bitty things, he'll bless us even the more. Saints, let's start praising God for everything that he do. The Bible said all things to give thanks. I thank and praise God. I said, God, you're a mighty good God for watching over my baby because he was having to walk to school. In the rain, he had to walk. In the cold, he had to walk. And in the heat, he had to walk. And I said, God, you fix this thing. And I praise and thank you for what he did. My husband had to go pick him up the other day, and he called him, Papa, can you come take me to school and blah, blah, blah. And I said, God, you're a good God. Now he got a way to school and a way back from school. And I owe God a praise.
without God I would be nothing and without God I, I would fail strengthens me but without him I could do nothing I couldn't even breathe and I just thank God I had to go check on them youngins them children's and I thank God for traveling grace so much craziness going on in the world today you got to have the Lord on your side because without him, you would be lost like a ship without a sail. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord.
to my servers now close. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for all of the testimonies that went up before him. Hallelujah. We thank him for moving in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, um, we will have a selection by uh, the little ones. They're going to come with their selection, and then we'll be in the hands of Sister Jessica as we prepare for the word of God um, to go forth, and then Minister Green will come forth and just ask that you pray for him that God would use him for his glory and for his honor, and that God would just have his way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pray for these little ones as they come. Come on. short part of this song once you catch on join with me and I hope this is your prayer it just says in my life be glorified that's what we want God to do Oh, in my 
I say and do be glorified. Oh, oh, oh in my life. Oh, be glorified. Yes, be glorified. Move me out of the way so you can get the glory. Come on. In my life, be glorified. In my life, be glorified. That's our prayer today, Lord, in our lives. In my life, Lord, be glorified. No matter how painful it is in my life. Let's give him the glory and the honor and the praise he is due. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We praise you. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you really want God to be glorified in this place, come on and lift up your voices and give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. If God has really been good to you, come on and give him a praise. I see your hands clapping, but it ain't praise unless you're saying something. Open up your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah. Come on and tell the Lord thank you. Come on and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you for every way that you made. Thank you for how you touch my body. Thank you for how you touch my mind. Thank you for how you provided for me. How you sustaining and keeping me. God, I give you the glory. You get the glory. You get the honor. Hallelujah. You get the praise. Hallelujah, we just want to say thank you. Hallelujah, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for waking us. Thank you for touching us. Thank you for strength. Thank you for a sound mind. Thank you for making ways where there seem to be no ways. Lord, we thank you. We give you the glory. Lord, we give you the praise. We lift you up. We lift you up. Woo. Glory to God. We lift you up in this place. Come on and tell the Lord thank you. Come on and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, he is a good God. Yeah. God, he is a good God. God has been a good God. He is a good God. And guess what? He always going to be good. God ain't going to change. <laughs> Glory to God. He ain't going to change. God ain't going to change. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He said, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. So I, just think, I think we ought to give him praise and glory in, in this place. Hallelujah, God, we thank you. We magnify your name. You are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. You are a faithful God. Even in our faith, unfaithfulness, God, you remain faithful to us. And God, we just want to say thank you. God, we know it's preaching time and I can't preach without you. God, let me say what you want me to say, how you want me to say it. Let the word go forth with clarity and conviction, oh God. You meet us in this place. We thank you for being here. Oh, God, in this place, God, making yourself available to us, oh, God, to meet our needs on today. Give us a mind to reach out and touch you, to want to have an experience with you, to want to receive what you have for us on today. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and praise God. Come on and let's give God one more hand clap of praise. 
and shout out to God on your way down to your seats with the voice of triumph. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Giving honor and praise. Thanking God for our pastor and our first lady. Amen. Let's give them a hand clap. Thank God for my own beautiful wife. Amen. To all the saints of God, to the deacon brothers, to missionary. Amen. Now, yeah, I want you to give yourself a hand clap. Amen. Because you got yourself up on Sunday morning. Got yourself dressed. I don't know what you went through on yesterday, but you at the house of the Lord this morning. So God is a good God. Hallelujah. We thank God for blessing us to be in the house of God on this morning. Amen. There is a word from the Lord coming from Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 29. But we'll just read verses 14 through 18 for our hearing. Amen. And you know, if you've ever been in this position, sometimes you don't know what God wants you to preach, say, teach, witness, or whatever. It wasn't until Friday night where I got confirmation from God on what to speak on on today. Amen. And we just pray that we all get what we need from the Lord. Amen. Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 18, we'll read and we'll deal with verses 14 through 29. If you have it, say amen. Amen. The word of the Lord says, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them. The scribes questioning with him. And straightway all the people, when they had beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with him? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which had a dumb spirit. And wherever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and panteth away. And I spake to thy disciples and they could, they, sh they should cast him out and they could not. Amen. And the word of God is blessed. And today we're going to preach from the thought false advertisement. False advertisement. Amen. We've gotten so used to the point now where we all say that we don't care what people think about us. We don't care what people say about us. And that statement is true in a sense. But what we should care about is what we think about our God. We should care about what the world see when they see us when it comes to our God. Now, I might not care about what you say about me. But I should have something on the inside of me that cares about what you think about my God. And the view of the church world has changed now because the church now views success or effectiveness of, about how good your choir is or how nice your building is or how big your offering is or how big the crowd is in the church. But God has a different standard for what an effective church really is. The real way to point out an effective church is found in whether or not we are really operating in God's power. In our text today, Jesus is teaching us about the most important part of us being effective as a body of believers. And that is operating in the power of God. Verse 18 tells us that the disciples failed when they tried to cast the demon out of this little boy. And now this boy's dad had got an impression from them. And when he talked to Jesus about them and told them what they tried to do, he ended with four words. He said, and they could not. And he was right. They couldn't deny the fact that he came to them with a problem and they couldn't help him with the situation. He came to them hoping to find some help. But what he found out is that they didn't have no help to offer. They could not. Why did they fail? They fell because they lacked spiritual power. Now, we don't want to be a modern church in this modern time where we're so uh, heavenly intelligent, where we are not operating in the power of God. We should never want anybody to come to Bethel Church of God in Christ. Can we just make it personal this morning? We shouldn't want nobody to come to Bethel Church of God in Christ. And then after meeting us or coming to this church, they leave saying they couldn't help me. They couldn't help me find Jesus. They couldn't help me find peace. 
peace. They couldn't help me find the joy that I needed. And it's because of the lack of spiritual power. So let's, let's, let's set the stage for our text on today. We have a daddy, a father, who brought his son who was possessed with a demon to Jesus for healing. Jesus was up in the mountains when he got there. So when Jesus, he couldn't find Jesus, Jesus was up in the mountain. So he said, well, I'll just go to the next next day. So when he got there, he asked the disciples to heal his son, and they couldn't do it. So when Jesus walks up on the scene, he asks for an explanation. And the father starts describing the condition of his son. And if you look at verse 18, everything that the daddy was saying about his son was in the present tense. That means it's happening right now. This is going on in my boy's life right now. Then Jesus says in verse 19, he answered and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Now, Jesus, you look what how Jesus is talking. Jesus, he's talking to everybody there that day. It, it, it seems like nobody had the power to believe or had the power they needed to cast the demon out of this boy. The religious people didn't have the faith. The crowd that was there didn't have the faith. And sad to say, the daddy that was there, even though he was concerned, he didn't have the faith necessary to cast the devil out of his own boy. The worst part was the disciples who seen his power firsthand, who, who walked with him, who knew what Jesus was capable of, still couldn't do it. In many ways, the disciples, they, they, they are the picture of the church world today. Why did this man bring his sons to disciples in the first place? Because he thought they could get the job done. He thought that if their reputation preceded them. You know, they, they had to work miracles before. Amen. And if they did it before, then they could do it again. Amen. And just like them, we have a reputation. We say that we say that we sanctify. We fill with the Holy Ghost power. So if we claim that, then our reputation preceding us as well. So when people come in contact with you, they ain't expecting you to act like them. Can I preach up in here for a little bit? And they ain't expecting you to look at the situation like they looking at the situation. But when they come to you, they looking for Jesus. They ain't even looking for you. They looking for you to point them to Jesus. They looking them for, for you to point them in the right direction. This father, he came to Jesus, but he thought the disciples could help his son, but he found out that they lacked the power to make a difference. And, and now, as a result, this is a first impression. He bring his son to the disciples, and now the disciples can't help his son. So now they didn't, he didn't lost face with the daddy. Amen. And now the crowds, he didn't lost faith with them. They didn't lost faith with the scribes. And now they mocking them because of their lacking ability. They, can't, they ain't got the power to help this boy out so what was the difference this time they asked the question why why could we not cast out this demon they had answers to prayers before they had ministered effectively before they had some success in these men they, they even cast out demons before but this time they couldn't do it and Jesus see this lack of faith and then he started to tell I say how much longer am I I'm gonna be here with you how much longer am I gonna put up with you the worst part of this whole scene is not the condition of the boy, but it's the lack of power, the lack of faith, especially on the disciples' part. And can I preach to us on the day? Today, saints of God, we got everything we need to be effective. We got a nice building. We got good preaching. We got good money. We got good people. But yet and still, we lazy. And we don't want to do what God has commanded us to do. We just want to do what we want to do. I know you might not come expecting this this morning. Him, but this is what God said we need. Amen. And I got mine. I'm just giving you yours. Can I preach up in here? God is saying we got everything we need. We ain't getting splinters when we sitting on the benches. Amen. God gave us a voice. We got our sign mind, activities of our limb, but yet and still we ain't doing what God has commanded us to do. Why? Because we know we lack the spiritual power that we need. Amen. We, we know we can't go out there just no any kind of way. The world will whoop you up. Can I preach up in here? Y'all remember them skeever boys when they tried to run up on that devil? They say, Paul, I know, but who is this? Can I preach up in here? And they whipped 
them. Can I preach up in here? They whipped that boy and they was naked and wounded. Can I preach up in here? We can't go out into the world without no power because when they hear us uh, they hear a lot of noise uh, but they don't see a lot of effectiveness. They hear us saying you got to live right but they see you not living right. Can I preach up in here? We tell them they ain't can't help, they don't supposed to cuss uh, but they see us and hear us cussing. Can I preach up in here? We tell them you don't supposed to drink uh, but they see the church folks drinking. We say you don't supposed to lie but the church folks lying. So tell me why is the church folks lying, cussing, fussing, and doing all of this stuff? Because they ain't got no power. Can I preach up in here? You wonder why we backsliding? Because you ain't got no power. You wonder why you slipping up? Because you ain't got no power. You wonder why you fighting back? Because you ain't got no power. Somebody tell yourself, I need some power. They lack the power of God. So it don't matter how many times they touch that boy. That devil wasn't coming out. No matter how many times they say, come out, come out, come out. He wasn't going nowhere because the devil only recognized real authority. And that authority comes from the power of God. Now we're at a point now where we ain't satisfied with compromise instead of real deliverance. We trade in real deliverance for compromise. I will, I'll meet you halfway. No, we ain't meet nobody halfway. That devil coming all the way out. Can I preach up in here? And I ain't going to let down my standards. I ain't going to let down my morals just so I can compromise with you to get you to do what I want you to do. Now I want you to do what the word of God said do. I don't want you to cut your music down. I want you to turn it off. Can I preach up in here? I I don't want you to stop drinking just for the day. I don't want you to stop drinking all the time. Can I preach up here? I don't want you to stop sleeping with that man's wife. Oh, can I preach up in here just on the weekend? I want you to leave it alone, period. Can I preach up in here? I'm not compromising with you just so we can get along, but I'm going to call the devil all the way out. They ain't afraid of us because it's false advertisement. And they figured it out that them folks just talking. They ain't really about nothing. They ain't no threat. Can I preach up in here? Oh, they just say what I need to say to get you there. Oh, can I preach up in here? But when we get them here, they find out we ain't about what we talking about. Because we just operating in our flesh. We operating in our own agendas. Can I preach up in here? But God wants us to operate on his agenda. He wants us to move by his power. Y'all, oh, yeah, I preach up in here. We hear about the old saints and what the old saints used to do and they ain't here no more so it ain't our fault can I preach up in here it's all about us now yeah the older saints had wheelchairs and crutches hanging up on the wall that's cause they operated in God's power now we gotta ask ourselves what's wrong with us the problem ain't with God so the, the lack of power got to be with us you got to take a look at yourself stop worrying about the word we come to church talk about them the more that we talk about God we talk about what we see on the news more than we talk about God. We supposed to come to church to lift God up. We supposed to come to church to give him praise. We come to church to give him glory. But we talking about what's going on on the outside. Can I preach up here? That's why we come to church and we leave empty. We can't do nothing in the world because we show up at church on Sunday and we don't get nothing. Can I preach up in here? But if we come with our minds on Jesus, if we come wanting to experience him, then we can be effective when we leave this place. So Jesus hears this daddy's story. He hears the story. And, and, and then he commands that you bring the boy to me. Bring him to me. And when he get there in verse 20, the demon, he got the nerve to attack the boy again. Ain't that how the devil works? Now Jesus has stepped on the scene. That devil, he know deliverance close. And then it's when the devil really get the cutting up. When you're that close to a deliverance. And Jesus, Jesus, Jesus asked about how long the child been that way. In verse 21, he asked him how long he been that way. And the daddy say, it been like this since he was little. And it's a continual thing. It's like this all the time. And the father, he trusted again that the disciples, they could do it. But when they fell, you read in this text that how he viewed Jesus also kind of got the wavering a little bit. Because in verse 17, we see that the father brought his son believing that Jesus could do it. 
But by the time we get to verse 22, we get to the point he say, if thou can't do anything. I'm here to ask you how many people you didn't came in contact with had believed God, but after they encountered you, they left wondering if God is really God. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach up in here. Oh, if the wagon make a lot of noise, can I preach up in here? A lot of people are talking faith, but they ain't living faith. Oh, can I preach up in here? You was talking real good when, when it wasn't you, but when as soon as it became you, Hey Amen. You ain't get the answer that you wanted. You ain't get it as fast that you wanted. You ain't get it the way that you wanted. When people start looking at you, now they wondering if God really is God. Oh, but look at the kind of Savior we serve. See, when I, and, and, and I, I kind of enjoyed reading this part because when Jesus heard that, if he, in my mind, I was like, Jesus probably say, who you think you talking to? Oh, I ain't the disciples. Of, I ain't none of these other religious folks that you didn't came in contact with. Can I preach up in here? Oh, yeah. When you look at what he said, it's like Jesus said, what you mean if? It ain't if I can, but it's if you can. If you got the faith, can I preach up in here? All things are possible to him that believe in us. And after hearing what Jesus had to say, can I show you how we supposed to be as believers? When you look at what this man did, after hearing what Jesus had to say, he made one of the most honest statements in the whole Bible. He didn't deny that he was where he's supposed to be. He ain't lie like he was all there. He didn't say I didn't arrive. He been acting holier than thou. Can I preach? Reach up in here when Jesus gave him a word. That man said, Lord, I do believe, but help my unbelief. Y'all, can I preach up in here? We didn't been in some situations sometime where we didn't doubt, we didn't worry. Can I preach up in here? Oh, but doubt don't run away, God. Unbelief shut the door on God. So that's why he said, Don't help my doubt. Well, help my unbelief. Because if I got unbelief, then you can't do nothing. Can I preach up in here? Oh Lord, I do believe in you. I believe in your power power but my faith is weak I need you to help me grow my faith oh can we just be real with God on this morning sometimes our faith be weak sometimes we get tired of dealing with the same situation sometimes we get blindsided by situations and they kind of have us wavering and tilting oh but if you just got a little bit that's all God needs you just need a little bit don't let that little bit leave and lead you to unbelief God can work with that can I preach up in here Oh, but when he said that, look at our Lord and Savior. Oh, look at him. It ain't false advertisement no more. Because now the word then went forth. And this man know that God is really who he say he is. And as soon as he said this, as soon as that man was honest with God, right then, Jesus told that spirit to leave that boy. And look what else Jesus said. He said, leave him. And don't never come back. Can I preach up in here? So that take away the excuses that we got to deal with stuff for forever. That we got to do this for forever. We got to be like this forever. You ain't got to be a homosexual your whole life. You ain't got to be a liar your whole life. You ain't got to be an adulterer your whole life. An alcoholic, pimp, hormonger, whatever it is, your vice is. You ain't got to be like that your whole life. Because Jesus said leave and never come back. Somebody had to tell the devil to leave your house right now. Leave your husband, leave your wife, leave your children. Oh, we got the power, so you gotta speak and tell. Leave my house and, and don't never come back. This ain't false advertisement. This is the real thing. He say, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more unto him. But look at this devil one more time. Jesus spoke that word, but before he come out, he attacked the boy one more time. Oh, can you see he, he attacked him and then he come out. When he attacked him this time, the people around him thought he was dead. Yeah. Ain't that how the devil do? Yeah. Now we got a word. Jesus has spoke a word now. And he's still trying to bring doubt and unbelief into the people wanting want to think Jesus ain't really who he say he is. The people around him thought he was dead after this attack, but then Jesus, he does what he does best. He take the boy by the hand and then he lift him up. I already spoke the word. It don't matter how much the devil try to act up. He ain't dead. I already spoke it. 
That's how we got to believe God. We serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a God of his word. Every promise in this word, he able to back it up. He's still able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. He already spoke the word, so he just went over and lift the boy up. Can I preach up in here? When he gets up, we lift this boy up. Oh, he lift him up now. This time, he went down with a demon. But when he lift him up, he lifted him up free. Can I preach up in here? So there's some stuff that we can learn from all of this. Remember, Jesus could, but the disciples couldn't. We don't want to be a powerless church. Oh, can I walk up in here for a while? We don't want to be a powerless church. We don't want to be a, a church that's backed up by getting praises in our pats on the back saying how good a church we is. Oh, I like going over there. I like being with them. No, we got to care more about God. Can I preach up in here? A powerless church show Jesus in a bad light. Oh, we ain't no better than the club. The club runs specials. Can I preach up in here? Ladies drink three till twelve. Oh, if you dress this way, you get in free. Can I? If you act like this, you can do that. Can I preach up in here? We don't want to be a church that say you got to do this to come and get that. We don't want to be saying that you got to do this so God can do that. Can I preach up in here? Oh, because God ain't got no agendas. God live by this word. He bless according to this word. He bless according to these rules. Can I preach up in here? Because the disciples lack power. Huh? Their daddy assumed that Jesus ain't have no power. Huh? And the same is true about the house of God. Huh? When the world come in contact with us. Huh? Yes, Lord. Huh? They want to come in contact with somebody that really know Jesus. Huh? Not just talk about Jesus. Huh? Can I preach up in here? Huh? Oh, yes, Lord. Huh? When they claim to know God. Huh? But they find out that you really dead inside. Huh? When they find out that you dead. Huh? Then they think that Jesus did. Can I preach up in here? Uh, we don't want to be a church uh, that's guilty of false advertisement uh, claiming that we got something to give the people uh, but when they come to get it they can't find it uh, they can't find no help uh, they can't find no peace uh, they can't find no joy uh, can't find no love uh, can I preach up in here uh, all we got to offer uh, is a cold dead religion uh, a cold dead service uh, and that ain't gonna help nobody uh, can I preach up in here. How we expect them to be excited when we can't get excited. God has done great things. He's done mighty things. But when we come into the house of God, they can't tell what God done for us. I was telling my wife one day, I was saying that we tell our PG-13 version of our testimony. Oh, we don't want to tell the rate at all. Can I preach up in here? We don't want to tell what God really done for us. Can I preach up in here? And sometimes we ain't gonna never say nothing. And we still hoping folks don't find out some stuff that God delivered us from. But God is able. He's able still to deliver. He's still able to set free. He's still able to make a way and change your life. Say yes to God. Yes, Lord. When we look at this service huh, and we look at this scripture, huh, we see that weak faith huh, is better than no faith. Huh. The devil wants you to think this the end. Huh. He wants you to think that this ain't going to change. Huh. Look at this daddy with this boy. Huh. He said, my son been like this huh, all his life. Huh. He torment him every day. Huh. Can I preach up in here? Huh. And your faith will get weak too. Huh. If the devil always attacking your son, huh, attacking your husband, huh, attacking your family huh? can I preach up in here huh? but his face was weak huh? but it wasn't gone huh? can I preach up in here huh? say yes to God huh? this daddy had doubts huh? oh yes Lord huh? but there still was a little faith in his heart huh? and when he had that little faith huh? and he put it in the right place huh? Jesus moved on his behalf huh? say yes to God huh? and just like Jesus huh? is still in the lifting up business huh? Say yes to God. He took this poor dead boy, got his hand, and lifted him up into a whole new life. Say yes to God. 
yes Lord so Jesus is the same yesterday today and forevermore so if he did it for this boy who was tormented by a devil say yes Lord if he did it for this boy who had a demon in him say yes to God if he can lift him up if he can lift me up he can do the same for whoever it is I'm praying for that co-worker on the job in my community in the school house in the white house he can turn it he can turn it around he can turn it around he can touch the man he can touch the bishop he can touch the senator he can turn it around say yes to God that unsaved doctor he can touch him that unsaved lawyer he can touch him he can turn it around say yes to God I believe God is who he say he is there's no false advertisement when it comes to God if he say he can heal that's exactly what he can do if he say he can deliver there you go that's you can take that to the bank say yes to God give God glory in this place yes Lord again so when it's all over yes Lord when it's all over the disciples are they get by themselves with Jesus and they ask him why they fail and they thinking about a spiritual failure and they should have been. Amen. That's how we should be too. If we fail spiritually, it should be on your mind. You should wonder why this ain't happening. Because it ain't no lack in God. And they knew that. They couldn't run from that fact. So they know the problem got to be with us. So when I come to Jesus, I ain't going to ask him why you ain't help us. I need to know why we couldn't do it. Amen. Jesus tell them they failed because they didn't have no spiritual discipline. Oh, can I preach up in here now for a little bit? Amen. We, we discipline ourselves to do everything naturally. But we got to be we spiritual beings. We got to discipline ourselves to do the spiritual stuff. Oh, we got to learn how to pray more. We got to learn how to fast more. Amen. I ain't going to count about that. That's another message for another time. But when we look at this as a result, they lack their spiritual power. They lack their spiritual discipline and they didn't cast this devil out. Amen. We see that we need to pray. We need to be surrendered to God. We need to be dependent on God. And when the world sees us, uh, we don't want to get caught up in the fact that, oh, they ain't dressed how we want them to dress. They ain't talking like we want them to talk. Oh, Jesus seen this young man. He knew his situation. He knew he was full of the devil. Oh, but he knew that he needed another spirit. He knew he needed another life. Can I preach up in here? And I got to leave you now. Say yes to God. Can they say when they come to Bethel that the power of God is in this place? Or do they say they just talk about us. Huh? They just gossip about us. Huh? They just complain about us. Huh? Jesus didn't complain about the world. Huh? He looked for a way to help them. Huh? Can I preach up in here? Huh? Yes, Lord. He told them the truth. Huh? And he wanted them to be delivered. Huh? He wanted them to be saved. Huh? He wanted them to be set free. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? Yes, Lord. So when they see you, huh, when you step on the scene, huh, do they say that you serve a mighty God? Huh, or do they always hear you complaining, huh, whining and crying huh, about the stuff you're going through? Huh? Say yes to Lord. Yes, Lord. Huh? Or do they leave here saying, huh? I went there for help, huh? and they helped me. Huh? I went there for fellowship, huh? and they fellowship with me. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? I went there for love, huh? and they showed me love. Huh? I went there for hope, huh? and they gave me hope. Huh? I went there for peace, huh? and they showed me huh? the way to peace. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? I went there feeling the 
neglected but when I left I feel accepted say yes to God why because I went there for one thing I went there for love I went there for peace I went there for all of this but when I got there they gave me Jesus say yes to God yes Lord he is who he said he is say yes to God so today the ball is in your court say yes to God we can be people who can or we can be people who can't say yes to God it ain't no in between it ain't no faking it just to make it either you fake or you real say yes to God oh yes Lord and it's all up to us we don't want to be guilty or false advertisement say yes to God you got to remember right before this oh can I preach up in here Jesus had already given authority where he say you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover he am giving you power over the enemy y'all remember that he gave them power and authority already say yes to God and the next thing you know they ran up on the demon oh yes Lord and that's how he does us oh God he gives us a word oh can I preach up in here he's giving you a word today so you better be on guard tomorrow you better be on guard today say yes to God because that devil coming say yes to God but he ain't got to stay yes Lord you ain't got to be settled and satisfied with what the devil doing in your life say yes to God cast him out in the name of Jesus say yes to God oh bring it to Jesus he's able to deliver he's able to set free come on and give God glory in this place Hallelujah, everyone standing, everyone smiling on God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.